So the mathematical structure is the same, yes. which means that the kinds of orbits that planets do, these electrons should do around it, mm -hmm. right? And there's a guy, Sommerfeld, and at the University of Munich, Sommerfeld and some of his other students start looking at Bohr's atom, and they're like, well, this kind of looks like planets, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, he's just saying that the planet, the orbits are no longer like can be anywhere. They're only in these discrete spots. Sure. But like planets, they're racetracks that are predefined. Basically. Yeah. They, yeah. They're racetracks that are pre predefined. And Bohr is like they're all circles. OK. But um, the planets are held together by a central force due to gravity, mm -hmm. which has the same exact form as the central force due to electromagnetism. Just the constant is different. Electromagnetism is actually a whole lot stronger. But the one over R squared thing, where it's like if I double the distance, I decrease the force by one fourth. Yes. That thing is the same. Got it. So the mathematical structure is the same. Yes. Which means that the kinds of orbits that planets do, these electrons should do around it, mm -hmm. right? And planets don't do circular orbits. From the time of Newton and actually from the time of Kepler, we know that they use elliptical, elliptical orbits, orbits right? right? So Sommerfeld's like, let's generalize this thing, mm -hmm. okay? So we've got one number that tells you the orbit that it's in. Mm -hmm. What if we have another number that tells you sort of like the ellipticity yes. of this thing? Yes. Like how, how skewed this orbit is. Yeah, yeah. Is, is, it, is it like a, a wider elliptical orbit? Or yeah, or is it, is it real super, super circular? Right, you know? right, 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 right. And then, and then so that's, that, that becomes this guy. Yep. Okay? And so he's like, let, let's, let's, let's start including that. Okay, what's the advantage of this? Um, so now um, this guy is like, okay, what are we trying to explain here? There's something called the Zeeman effect. Okay, basically, when you put the, you know, you, you get these emission lines, but if you put the gas in a magnetic field, and then you do this experiment, instead of one line, you're going to get three. Okay. You're going to get the original line, then you're going to get one that's slightly higher frequency, and one that's slightly lower Low frequency. frequency. Okay? So, this Zeeman effect is now explained because if I've got an elliptical orbit, yeah. that, and I put a magnetic field, yes. that elliptical orbit can be, he said, can be oriented towards, uh, perpendicular, or anti-parallel, yeah, right? Right, like kind of like a magnet. Yes. Um, a compass. How does a compass yeah, work? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It finds the true north based on the Earth's big, big magnetic, magnetic field, field, right? It aligns with it. Yes. Well, now we've got like this elect electron orbit yes. that'll either align with the magnetic field for a lower, lower energy, energy, right? Or yes, not align for a higher energy or an intermediate value. So now you get your three. That's why there's the three bars, right? Yes. So he's like, okay, cool, dope. Yes. This is working. Yes. Um, and you know, he he gets some points there.